Hey Richard, Dima here from Dima's Woodshop. How do I know how fast to spin a router bit? I know that this one and this one can't really be spun at the same speed and they're not always printed on the stem. So how do I know? Is there a way to figure it out? Is there a formula? If there is, would you like to share? Another really good question, Dima. And I've had to think about this one a little bit more than, uh, than some of the other ones. Now, you are right, bigger the cutter, slow the speed down. Um, the reason for that is to do with the, the circumference and the maths behind it. Um, so I'll go into that in, in a bit more detail in just a second. But also there's some more practical um, applications as well. If you have a larger bit, it's also heavier. And as you spin it, you've got more weight spinning and that can introduce vibration. If those bits are absolutely perfectly balanced um, because they're rotating, they need to be balanced, just like your car wheels will be balanced with the little weights, um, that can introduce vibrations which then translates to poor quality in the cut. So that's the sort of the, the practical and obviously as you slow that down you, you, you get towards a more balanced state. So that's one side of it. The other thing to bear in mind is, is as that cut is coming round, it's taking its cut churning out wood, that wood um, spoil or swarf, whatever chips, whatever you want to call them, need time to leave. And the faster you spin, the less time that swarf has got to, to disappear. And if you increase it to the point where it can't clear the swarf, but it's taking more and more timber, then you get um, what's known as chatter. And you may well have come across this with smaller cutters in deep pockets where the the pitch of the machine and the cutting, you, you, you get a, a much coarser whine because the, you're basically cutting against all the chippings and it's all, all packing in. So there's that practical side to it as well. In terms of how do you know how fast to spin it, I mean, you're right, not all companies will print the, uh, the maximum RPM on the, uh, on the shank of the cutter. That's a good way to, to pick out, in my opinion anyway, to pick out who's a good supplier to use they don't use that information and pass it on then I'm not going to buy my cuts from them. Um, if it's not printed on the, um, the cutter then look it up either online ring the company um, I noticed yours were made by Grizzly ring Grizzly and ask them say you know I've got this cutter what speed do you recommend if they don't know, know or they can't answer the question then again they should be able to I wouldn't be buying my cuts from them. So put the onus a little bit more back on the, uh, the supplier. Now, if they can answer it, then great, they'll give you an answer and then you can make a note of that and go down the line. So for me personally, the supplier that I use, they tabulate and provide the information on the, the RPMs very clearly. They either print it on the shank or it's actually part of every bit of packaging for every cutter that they, they sell. Now, I'm not saying that these are the speeds that you should use, but if you're using trend cutters that, that I use predominantly, um, from a 1mm to 24mm cutter, they recommend 28,000 RPM. For 25mm, which is kind of an inch, up to 30mm, which is about an inch and a quarter, um, they're saying 24,000 RPM. And for inch and a quarter up to two inches, which is sort of roughly 31 mil to 50 mil, they're recommending 18,000 RPM. So you can see the RPMs are starting to slow down as you're increasing the periphery. Let me bring the camera in and try and explain or, or visualize for you um, why that's so important. What I've got here is a one inch diameter cutter and a larger panel raising bit, which is about three inches. Here we're at one inch, here we're at three. This is the circumference of the cutter. We know that the circumference of a circle is equal to pi times its diameter. So pi is constant, 3.1415, and in this example we have a one inch diameter cutter. So that gives us 3.1415 inches from here 
all the way around back to the start and what I've done is I've drawn a, a line across here. But what we want to know is the the speed. So we multiply that by 28,000, so that's our RPM, as revolutions per minute. So one revolution is 3.1415 inches. That will give us la 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 87,962 inches per minute yeah that's a speed that's a linear speed um, and actually that relates to 83.3 ish miles per hour um, so for those of you who work in Kilometers per hour, that's roughly 134 kph. Yeah, so there are there are numbers. If we then put a bigger cutter in our router and keep the same RPM, so we're staying at 28,000 RPM, but we put a three inch cutter in here. Again, the circumference is pi d, which is 3.1415 but now we're going to multiply it by 3 and that gives us 9.4245 inches which is this line a back to a yeah multiply that by 28,000 again and that gives us 263,886 inches per minute. Let me convert that into miles an hour and we actually end up with 249.9, I think it's 0.89 miles per hour. Um, so this is simple maths. All I've done here is I've plugged inches per minute into one of, like an app that converts units and that's your miles an hour. So, so roughly 250 miles an hour is about 402 kilometers per hour. Yeah. Now, as I've already said, for a one inch diameter cutter, I'll go off um, you know, 28,000 RPM. So about 80 miles an hour is kind of a safe speed for a router cutter. So in order to reduce this down to 80 miles an hour, we've got to reduce the inches per minute number down. Um, Pi is a constant, the, the size of the cutter is going to be a constant, so the thing that we've got to change is the RPM. We've got to reduce that down. About a three inch cutter, we'd probably be looking at about eight to 10,000 RPM. That'll give us a smaller inches per minute. Now obviously they make cutters that are larger than um, two inches in diameter, but they're not really things that I use on a day to day basis, so I don't have to memorize them or have them really handy to um, you know, be able to look up. So anything larger than that, which is generally going to be in a table, so in a stationary machine, the the cutters will have a recommended maximum speed, and obviously they'll be somewhere between, off the top of my head, I think 16,000 16, RPM, uh, down to about eight or 10,000, depending on the, um, the diameter. So it really boils down to, ask your supplier, if they can't answer, are they a worthy, um, or a reliable source for your cutters. Another important thing to uh, to consider also is don't throw away your instruction manual for your router. Now I don't know about yours, but all my routers go from one to five, or A to E, and that doesn't really relate to an actual RPM. So in that manual, they should have a little table that says speed five is 28,000 RPM, speed four is 22,000 or whatever it is, and and slow it down that way so you can then adjust your individual specific router down to a speed. Well I hope that answers your question, if it doesn't then please do leave a comment, get in touch and I'll try and take a little bit more depth. For everyone else out there, if you've got a question and you want to appear on a cutting edge router tips video, send me a message, leave a comment, get in touch and uh, you can send me your little video clip as well. So. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you again here very soon for another Cutting Edge Route Tips video.